Hey, what's up everybody? This is Anthony from Anthony's Custom. This is obviously Batman from the Arkham Asylum uh, Wave 1, Series 1, whatever you want to call it. At the ears, at just how he's standing right now, he's exactly 9 inches tall at the tip of the ears. Uh, maybe you could get a little bit more height out of him by putting the head up and straightening the knees out a bit. But uh, that's 9 inches tall the way I had him. He is now 9 and nearly a half. So good size figure really absolutely great detail look at the texturing on the suit the face sculpt is really really good everything's really cool about this figure it's overall just an awesome awesome looking figure that is not to say it does not have faults though and I will point those out uh, let's go ahead and dive into accessories let's do accessories first he comes with another piece for his cape. This one wraps around. And how it works is, if you look in here, it's just kind of like a ball joint with a peg on it, just like the wrist. <sighs> Pull that off. It just slides onto that peg. And the new piece has a hole in the socket area. And you just put that back on over the peg. They're a little tight, but not so much so they have to worry about breaking it. It doesn't feel fragile or anything. So go ahead and get that on there, and it'll snap into place. And what you can do with this cape is, not it's not as versatile as you would hope, or at least as I hoped, but it just wraps around and kind of gives them more of a dynamic look. So you can do a bunch of different poses with that, but uh, that's, that's the cape in a nutshell. It is uh, in two pieces no matter what you do. Personally, I don't care for that too much. I would have liked to have another middle piece that just kind of covers the gap a little bit. It just looks kind of weird to me, and they don't really line up very well. So that's one of the faults with this thing. I don't care for the cape being split down the middle. I think it should have been a three-part thing, if anything. I don't know. I just don't like that. And then, as you guys know from other reviews, I don't like capes that aren't symmetrical. Now, even with this piece on, and I know that's just for certain poses and stuff, so that's fine, but even with the regular piece on, it's not really symmetrical. This is always curved, and it's kind of uh, windswept this way a lot. It's not too bad, so I don't really mind. I mean, it's not perfect, and it still looks cool, but it's not as symmetrical as I would have liked. Having this top part of the cape be separate pieces, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as I would have liked, but it's still, it's okay, it's not so bad, and you get used to it. And then with the uh, cape being connected the way it is, if you need to pose it, as you hear, hopefully, it's ratcheted, and it, it moves any way you want. So you can really get some mobility out of the cape. It doesn't look good from behind, obviously, because it's stuck into his back. But if you need it, need it to look like it's blowing, for a pose that you want to do or you know you can pretty much get the cape to do whatever you want it to do so it is still pretty nice touch okay let's move on to the head articulate oh accessory sorry forgot okay so he has four hands total he has two fist hands there's one on here already one right there and another one right there they're just plain old fists sculpted well and painted well but they're just fists, so there's not a whole lot to talk about. He has one open hand, which is on his left hand right now. Completely open. Not really very good in my opinion, because it's meant to hold the battering, which is done really nicely. It's got the little holes in there, and it looks like it cl collapses, which it doesn't. It would have been really cool if they actually let it swing shut. That would have been a very, very nice touch. But it does have the silver on the edges, and it's not too flimsy or brittle, so I... Didn't mean to drop it. So it's, it's pretty cool, but he can't hold it. If you look at the hand, there's not really any sculpt to it that allows him to hold it very well. You can kind of get it wedged in there sometimes, but it's still pretty not in there very well. So one of those little clear rubber bands or that come with figures, or if you, um, if you have braces, those kind of clear rubber bands would work, I think. I've never had braces, so I'm not positive, but I've heard that works. But otherwise, it's gonna be pretty tricky to get him to hold the battering very well. <laughs> And he also comes with one uh, trigger finger hand, and that is for his grapnel hook, or whatever it's called, I'm not sure. Now mine has this white stuff on the bottom, it looks like glue or just a bad paint job. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. I'm not too, too worried. 
because I think I'm going to be getting another Batman anyway. But I can always just touch that up if I have to. It's not something to have a throw a fit over. But it, it's otherwise, other than that paint mess up, the accessory here is really nicely done. Great detail, great paint, and it fits in his hand fairly well. And by fairly well, I mean just about perfectly. Can't really complain. The only problem is it kind of points up. So you have to have, have his hand pointed down in order for him to point it forward. Which is alright. It's not, not the best situation, but it's still pretty good. I haven't tried putting the battering in this hand. Maybe you can. And it's still kind of loose, but even so, I don't think you'd really hold it like that. Well, actually you would, it's just kind of still trigger finger-ish. But still, I would probably just go ahead and do that and leave this other hand as just an open hand. Because that way he can still hold the battering. So, there you go, those are the accessories. That's all I come... <coughs> excuse me. That's all he comes with. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the articulation. The head is on a ball joint on top of the neck. It just has very limited movement. You can get it down, but not up at all, which would have been nice because Batman looks up a lot. You know, since he's climbing rooftops and things, he has to look up to the rooftops to get there. But he can't really look up so much. The neck lets him move a little bit, but not as much as I would have liked. And the head has a full swivel on there, and like I said, ball joint. So a good range of motion there. The neck is a separate piece, just like is common for these Play Arts figures. But it has this point on it for like where the muscles go. And it doesn't look good because it sticks out and just looks weird. So you kind of have to leave the neck down in there for it to look good. And then you lose some mobility on the head. And also it's on a double ball joint so you can kind of see it can move back and forth a little bit. So you can play with that and get it how you want it. And uh, even though it is somewhat awkward because of that point there, it's still pretty nice. So no, no complaints there. He has the double ball jointed torso as is normal. So decent range of motion in the upper torso. It swivels there. And it also has the same articulation in the waist, which is common. The hips are floating, which is normal for the Play Arts figure. So if you're familiar with these at all, nothing new there. It's got the ball joint in there. The thigh actually rotates around the socket. Hopefully you can kind of see that. And then it also can move around on the ball joint. So pretty good range of motion there. The hips are still a little wide for my liking. I don't think that bar that's in there needs to be quite so long. But it's not so bad. If you can situate the floating hip joint proper, properly, it's, it doesn't look too bad. They're not so wide. Uh, I would have liked this abdomen area to be a little bit bigger. As you can see, it's significantly narrower. There's a big gap for the torso. And I know that's for to allow for the articulation, but it's just kind of ugly looking. And then the uh, little pouches on his belt are softly connected. They're kind of all over the place. They're kind of leaning off to the side a little bit. This one's slanted. And one of these back ones popped off on me when I first took them out of the package. So I had to glue that back on. So be careful with those. But otherwise he's uh, pretty well articulated in the torso. Just get used to having this gap here because it's going to be there pretty much. No matter what you do, he ends up falling backwards and doing that unless you really wedge the cape down and then he's okay all right for the shoulder it's kind of hard to show you this but it's just like any other play arts figure it's on the ball joint and it has that forward that horizontal motion can you see that's moving in there so he can get his arm all the way around in front of himself so that's a really nice touch because of that extra joint there and then, of course, there's the uh, standard disc that goes in the shoulder that allows it to raise up. He, it's kind of loose in there, just overall, but it's not so loose that it's a problem. And this is nice and soft, so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, mine sticks out a little bit up here. It should be wedged in there better and glued, but it's not. So maybe that's common. I don't know. Actually... I think it's going to be common because it's all one piece here and um, it's just not connected. It's not actually one piece there and I didn't tear it or anything so that might be a common issue. I don't know. Keep an eye out for that. Anyway, back to the arm. It's got the bicep swivel just like a Marvel Legends or DC figure. It's got a single jointed elbow in terms of just this bending. You get a little bit past 90 degrees. And like the uh, McFarlane figures, the elbow joint rotates in the bicep and in the forearm, so plenty of range of motion there. He has the uh, forearm 
guard thing gauntlet but it's nice and soft material so it's not going to get in the way these you don't have to worry about these breaking off they're nice and flexible and the wrist is just like the elbow same exact type of joint the ball joint with the ratchet in it and then the rotation in the wrist and the forearm and the hands they swap out on the peg system like you would expect but it's not so fragile that it's really scary to do it like some of the Street Fighter figures or some of the other Play Arts figures so go ahead and uh, swap them out use caution but don't freak out they're not going to break probably okay got the hips done onto the knees same as the uh, um, well most Play Arts figures I suppose they don't have too much sculpt work done so they're kinda ugly I hate the way they do most knees they need to put a kneecap on there and not sculpt it into up here this should not be sculpted here this should be a hole just like Marvel Legends, it should be cut out and then the kneecap should actually be on the knee joint instead of just having this big ugly piece of plastic. I hate that. So you're going to probably do like me and just leave it one bend. It doesn't look as bad either way. Probably not like that. But using both bends it really just is sloppy looking. So I really don't care for that. And then the ankle is just like the wrist you can kind of see it in there it's a ball joint that swivels up here and down here and then the foot has the uh, instead of the peg shooting down this way straight to the bottom the peg comes forward so you can rotate the foot on the peg that way instead of just sideways so full range of motion in the feet the uh, boot thing is pretty soft so you can put the foot up if you need to or doesn't go down that far though, so I don't care for that, but it's okay. And it has no toe articulation, so you're going to have be flat-footed. But still, it's okay. It's not so bad. So even with those problems with the hips and the torso and the neck and the cape, and I mean, every little area probably has a little bit of a problem that I would change if I was designing the figure. But I'm not, and there's always going to be those kind of issues. Especially with a highly articulated detailed figure like this, there's going to be things people would do differently. So all of that stuff aside, it's a really nice figure and I do recommend any Batman fan to get it if you can afford it. I know they're a little bit pricey, but I think they're probably it's probably worth it. It's just a really great figure and uh, I think for the price point you're getting a heck of a deal. You're getting a lot of sculpting, a lot of painting, and a lot of articulation for $60 or so, or even $50 if you can find it. So, without a doubt, I do recommend it. If you are in the market for a higher-end collectible, this is the way to go. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the rest of the videos. And in the meantime, keep collecting.